So we're looking at the gradient and intercept of a line. We'll look at gradient, lines with only one intercept, and then a big important skill, finding the rule of a line. So the gradient is the slope of a line. Now if I draw a line with a slope, and another line with a slope, you can easily see that this one's steeper, even though they go up the same amount. And of course, because you're very clever, you can see that the reason this one's steeper is it because it takes much less across distance to go the same distance up. The amount that a line goes up is its rise, and the amount that goes across is its run. And so the gradient, the slope of a line, how steep it is, depends on how far it goes up compared to how far it goes across. So, and actually the formula for the gradient is its rise divided by its run. The gradient of a line is the rate of change of y. That is, how much does y go up or down when x changes? Now, when we've got a real life situation, such as a plumber costs $100 call out fee plus $80 per hour, that hour, that time is x, the cost is y, and that $80 per hour says that the gradient of that line would be 80, because the cost goes up $80 for every hour. We'll come back to that. We're just trying to get the concept of the gradient across. Now, gradient can be positive. A positive gradient slopes up from left to right. So this line here oops, has a positive gradient. A gradient can be negative. It slopes down from left to right. This is a negative gradient. Horizontal and vertical lines have gradients. This one here has a gradient of zero because it doesn't go up at all. doesn't matter how far it goes across with zero divided by its across and zero divided by anything is zero. And a vertical line either has an infinite or an undefined gradient because its run across is zero. We can't divide by zero and it goes up forever, so its rise is infinite. So there's different gradients that we care about. Now, intercepts. Intercepts are the point at which the lines cut the y and x-axis. So we'll usually be dealing with the y-intercept. For example, the y-intercept here is 4 or 0, 4. And the y-intercept here is negative 3 or 0, negative 3. So it's worth noting that the y-intercept is always where x equals 0. We'll have to come back to that. We'll need our y-intercepts. And the x-intercept is where the line cuts the x-axis. Some lines only have one intercept. Those are any lines that go through the origin, 0, 0. So this line here is actually y equals negative x. It has no number at the end of the rule. And the number at the end of the rule gives you the y-intercept. So you can imagine that this actually has the rule y equals negative x plus 0. And where it passes through the y-axis is at 0. So any line that passes through the origin only has one intercept. And also our horizontal and vertical lines. Ah, horizontal. Now you'll be doing a different worksheet for your horizontal and vertical lines. And I didn't get out a copy of it. Excuse me a moment.
Sorry. So horizontal and vertical lines are lines that, unlike our normal rule, only have one letter. They've only got a Y or an X. And that Y or X just equals a number. What this is saying is, I don't care what X is, Y is always 3. So we go to Y equals 3. Now I teach in core that we should put another two dots where Y is 3. If X is 1, Y is 3. If X is 2, Y is 3. But you're okay not to do that as long as you can remember that for Y to always be 3, you've got to have a horizontal line straight through Y equals 3. Label our line. So lines, horizontal and vertical lines, the Y equals lines are horizontal. So Y equals negative 2. We go to Y equals negative 2. And everywhere along that line, Y is negative 2. I don't care what X is. And then, of course, our x equals lines. Here's x equals 5. The only way you can make x always be 5 is to have a vertical line going straight down through x equals 5. So the x equals lines with no y are vertical. x equals 0, that's interesting. That's the line that is the y-axis. So the only way you can graph that is actually to sort of put a line, put the arrows, and then very clearly label it, because it's very hard to actually draw x equals 0 and y equals 0. So that's our horizontal and vertical lines. Now, what we need to be able to do then is find the rule of a line. And you can do this with a table or with a graph. And the rule of a line, now, if it's a horizontal or vertical line, we just learnt that. You can look at this, you say this line only goes through y equals negative 1. So line A, the rule is y equals negative 1. That's it. Horizontal and vertical lines, the rule is easy. Rule is easy. For any other lines, you need the gradient and you need the y-intercept. And the places that you get those are, you can read it from the graph. So the gradient of b, as x goes across 1, y goes up 1. As x goes across 1, y goes up 1. So that's a gradient of 1, because y goes up 1 for every x1. x, we try to make x1. We can get the gradient from the graph, or we can also get it from the table. And sometimes the easiest way is to make a table of values for the graph. So for graph B, x and y when x is 0, sorry, I'll draw a decent table of values there. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 3. The gradient is the pattern in y. When x goes up by 1, the pattern in y plus 1 plus 1 gives me the gradient. So the gradient is 1 for b. And you also need the y-intercept. Again, you can get it from the graph, or you can get it from the table. From the graph, you can see that the y-intercept of line b is 1. From the table of values, you get the y-intercept when x is 0. So this very boring line here has a gradient of 1 and a y-intercept of 1. You get the gradient from the pattern, 
and you get the y-intercept where x is 0 and the trick with any line which you've probably worked out because I keep on using these checks and not really explaining why is that any line will be y equals now we use m for the gradient and you know that very well that the pattern in y is the number in front of the x, the coefficient of x. mx says you put the gradient as the coefficient of x and you also know that when x is 0 the number here on its own, the number here for y, ends up added or subtracted onto the end of the line and we'll call the y-intercept c just because that's what the rule is any straight line that isn't horizontal or vertical is going to be able to be written as y equals the gradient times x plus or minus the y-intercept so for line b we write y equals mx plus c and then where the m is we put the gradient 1 we put our y equals I want 1x and then we put the y-intercept plus 1 you don't actually need to have a 1 in front of an x so you could write y equals x plus 1 that's it that's the rule of line B line C whoops now you don't have to go for a table of values because you can get the gradient and the y-intercept from the graph. Let's get it from the graph and from the table. Gradient, which is m, now it's a negative gradient. Rise over run. So when I go across 1, I go down 2. The down is why it's negative, so it's negative 2 because I've gone across 1. What was my rise or drop in that? It was negative 2. The y-intercept, which is c in our rule, is 4. So from the graph, I could say, look, y equals mx plus b. Sorry plus C, some rules use B. Y is my gradient is negative 2, put the X in, my Y-intercept plus 4. If your Y-intercept was a negative down here, you'd have a negative, minus 4. But if you're not feeling that confident with the gradient, then go for a table of values instead. X and Y 0, always have 0, 1, and 2. From my line, when x is 0, y is 4. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 0. And you look at the pattern, because this is the gradient as well. Minus 2, minus 2. Gradient is minus 2. X intercept, where, sorry, y intercept, where x is 0, is 4. I could get these from the table if I wasn't confident with the graph.